was a great fight. Thanks a lot. In every weapon system, there is a time of transition from development to deployment, when testing and training overlap. This report from January 72 to January 73 covers that time for the F-14A air superiority fighter. I am Rear Admiral Swoos Sneed, the Navy's F-14 project manager. This is an F-14 getting ready for a simulated carrier landing during testing in May 1972. And so is this. During June, at the Naval Air Test Center, Tuxton River, Maryland, F-14 number 10, later replaced by number 17, gets ready to try its sea legs. And in the same month, a full year ahead of previous fighter developments, Lieutenant Commander Brown brought the Tomcat aboard the USS Forrestal. Two catapults, two arrestments, and 13 touch and goes were performed in a one day operation. At fighter design takeoff gross weights, or with a load of Phoenix missiles for combat air patrol missions, the F 14 can be launched at military power. No afterburner is needed. The AUG-9 radar, in combination with Phoenix missiles, reached several milestones at Point Magoo, California. In August, two Phoenix missiles were fired at long-range targets, one shown here in slow motion and one in real time. In December, the AUG-9 weapons system, tracking widely separated airborne targets, launched four Phoenix and guided them simultaneously to hits. Sparrow missile firing demonstrated airframe compatibility with another fleet weapon. The close-in air combat sidewinder was also successfully demonstrated. Another impressive dogfighting weapon, the M61 Gatling gun, filmed here at 10 times normal speed, demonstrated its 6,000 round per minute capability throughout the entire F-14 flight envelope. During firing, gun gases are deflected away from the engine air inlet. In August, Navy Preliminary Evaluation 2, a major milestone, took place on the east and west coasts simultaneously. On the west coast, the AUG-9 radar attained repeated lock-ons in both long-range and dogfight modes in a dynamic environment. On the East Coast at Calverton, New York, the NPE team successfully evaluated low-speed characteristics, combat, engine, and gun performance. Aircraft number two is well into high angle of attack investigations. To date, it has been determined that the F-14 will not stall. Angles of attack as high as 77 degrees were attained. Indicated air speeds ranged from zero to 35 knots. The airplane was completely maneuverable. Recovery was instantaneous. Landing with the wings in a fully swept position of 68 degrees, touchdown speed is 145 knots. Rollout to a full stop is 4,500 feet. same landing from a ground level camera. Both scenes were filmed at actual speed.
with high altitude performance and combat sealing parameters as their main goal, a Grumman test crew started the program in aircraft number eight by checking aircraft control and pressure suit compatibility. In the first of a series of high altitude flights, number eight achieved an altitude of 56,000 feet. Engine performance and aircraft handling qualities were excellent at high altitudes. This same aircraft demonstrated a full thrust Zone 5 afterburner takeoff using only 1,100 feet of runway. demonstrated short field landing and takeoff. Landing and rollout took 2,100 feet. From full stop to liftoff, 700 feet. Landing, rollout, and liftoff, 2,800 feet. Production of F-14As continues on schedule in Bethpage. The forward module of number 46 has been assembled and aircraft number 48 is in sub-assembly. Forward modules of the F-14A are now being produced at the rate of three per month. At Calverton, aircraft numbers 25 through 36 are in final assembly. Aircraft number 36 marks the transition of full final assembly operations from Bethpage to Calverton to allow higher production rates. In addition to the final assembly line is the rotate and clean fixture. Here each aircraft in production spends about 12 hours in a positive approach to foreign object damage prevention. August saw number 13 enter the world's largest shielded anechoic chamber at the Calverton facility for electromagnetic compatibility and radar hazards tests. The 6,500 electrical and electronic subsystem tests required are now complete. Also, well along in the final assembly phase of production is the prototype F-14B, the first F-14 to use the advanced technology engine. Wings, fins, rudders, stabilizers, and all surface controls have been installed. The first advanced technology engine, or the B version, is undergoing final testing at Calverton. With a basic thrust to weight improvement of approximately 30% over the A engine, this engine has had over 50 hours of running time. Testing is over 90% complete. A second engine is being readied for first flight. Aircraft number 18 was the first F-14A assigned to the Naval Air Station, Miramar, California, for flight and ground crew indoctrination. Effective 14 October 1972, 
Fighter Squadron 1 and Fighter Squadron Its delivery faced formal ceremonies led by the Secretary of the Navy, the Honorable John W. Warner, marking the commissioning of the first two F-14A fighter squadrons, VF-1 and VF-2. Subsequent deliveries of Tomcats 19 through 22 between October 1972 and January 1973 have further accelerated the Navy's evaluation program. Over half of the 2200 total flight hours have been devoted to weapon system test. The next major tests are the Board of Inspection and Survey trials in February 1973. The F-14A program now spans four years, from contract award in January 1969 to the present. 21 aircraft have been delivered, 10 of them to the Naval Missile Center at Point Magoo. All milestones have been met or exceeded. Major publications have been delivered. Maintenance personnel have been factory trained. Naval air maintenance trainers are in place and air crew training is underway. The F-14 will be ready for deployment this summer. <laughs>